whether it's ISIS or al-Nusra or Khorasan, there are thousands of jihadists in Iraq and Syria threatening global security. In Syria, the influx of foreign fighters far surpasses anything we have even seen in Afghanistan. The scale of this mass migration is unprecedented and it results in deadly attacks. More foreign fighters have flocked to Syria and Iraq to fight for radical Islamic groups like ISIS in the last two years than fought in Iraq and Afghanistan in the last 12 years. We have a map. I hope we can put that up on the screens um, that show the uh, areas that uh, uh, these fighters have come from. Uh, they have come from all over the world. Uh, according to estimates, around 15,000 jihadists from over 80 countries have traveled to Syria to fight. 2,000 of these killers are from Western countries, including the United States and the e EU. 500 are from the U.K., 700 from France, 400 from Germany, and over 100 from America. All of these Western passport holders can travel freely in Europe and even to the United States once they have finished their tour of duty in Syria. None of this is hypothetical. We have seen returning jihadists go on murderous rampages before. May, a returning French jihadist from Syria killed three people during a shooting spree at a Jewish museum in Brussels. In October, a wannabe jihadist who tried to travel to Syria killed a Canadian soldier. Seven American wannabe jihadists were arrested in the last 15 months trying to travel to Syria to join ISIS. A senior Obama administration official in September said that some Americans who have fought with ISIS in Syria have returned to the United States. One known example is the case of Eric Haroun. Haroun actually fought with al-Nusra in Syria on an RPG team. And on March 27, 2013, he flew to Dulles International Airport where he was taken in custody by the FBI. He was brought up on charges for conspiracy to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization, pled guilty of lesser charges and was released in September of that same year. Haroon died of a drug overdose in 2014. He isn't the only American we need to be concerned about. European jihadists are just as much a threat to U.S. security since they travel freely to the United States under the Visa Waiver Program. I doubt that U.S. and European intelligence services know who every one of these individuals may be. Just as a side note, the DOD and the FBI were both invited to be here today to testify at this hearing, and they uh, would not come. Some can say these individuals will slip through the cracks. Even more concerning is that this administration uh, does not seem to have a whole government approach to combat ISIS global recruitment program. The network is global, sophisticated, and effective. ISIS uses its global network to recruit fundraise and smuggle fighters into and out of Syria. This is much more sophisticated network than anything we know from core al-Qaeda operatives out of Pakistan and Afghanistan. The best way to reduce the threat that these foreign fighters pose is to identify how the ISIS recruitment network works and develop a global strategy to destroy it. We need to understand what countries these fighters are coming from, but also how they are getting into Syria once they leave their home country? What are the main countries being used by foreign fighters to get into Syria? What kind of political pressure are we using on these countries to go after these networks? We are not sure what that is. That is part of the purpose of this hearing today. Complicating issues further, there are a number of Gulf countries who are either unwilling or unable to crack down on jihadists trying to get into Syria. Many of these countries act as a hub of foreign fighters. We need to do more to enlist the cooperation of these Middle Eastern countries to tackle the threat, but we can't do this without a comprehensive plan. We also need to combat ISIS online recruitment network. Social media is crucial to the ISIS network of recruiting. They have a whole media center dedicated to producing high-quality propaganda videos, tweets, and the like. This is how their recruitment works. After initial vetting by an ISIS recruiter, travel logistics are finalized. Turkey is the most common used route, and recruiters have extensive contacts on both sides of the Turkey-Syrian border to bring fighters in and out of Syria. So-called religious and physical training begins, followed by testing the foreign fighters with small tasks, and after that, recruits are giving their marching orders to go and fight. 
They are paid and they are given weapons. This is a well-oiled machine and very organized. ISIS is the only going to get better, more efficient and more deadly at this and will turn out to be and it will turn more attention to attacks on the West in years to come. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses uh, this morning. I will now turn to the Ranking Member, Mr. Sherman from California, for his five-minute opening comments.